Okay, let's look at another type of binary compound, uh, one for which there is a different naming system. Um, the stock system will work for these compounds, but this system is pretty easy and it's kind of stuck around for a long time because the system is so easy to use and it's one that we use pretty often with some pretty common compounds. Um, here are some examples of some common gases that we've probably heard of. Often they're thought of as pollutants, um, CO2, CO, SO2, SO3, um, all of which are given off during the combustion of fossil fuels, especially CO2 and CO and then SO2 and SO3 in the combustion of coal. Um, actually, they've been cut down significantly by the use of anti-pollution um, processes, uh, scrubbing of the gases that come off of a power plant, for example, reduces the SO2 and the SO3 concentrations. And we're probably familiar with the names of at least the first couple of these. CO2 is carbon dioxide and CO is carbon monoxide. And you can tell by the names, they don't follow the naming system that we've used uh, in the past for binaries. So let's have a look here at how they're different than other compounds by reviewing the periodic table. On the periodic table, we have that stair step line that separates the metals on the left-hand side of the periodic table from the non-metals that are on the right-hand side of the periodic table. And if you look back at these compounds that we looked at here, these new binaries, you can see that all of the elements in these are non-metals. Have a look again there at the periodic table and notice that carbon and oxygen are both non-metals, as are sulfur and oxygen. So, whereas all the other binaries that we've looked at so far have consisted of a metal together with a non-metal, these are examples of compounds composed of two non-metals. And the book calls these type 3 binaries, um, the third type that they go through in the book. They have no metal in them. They are all non-metals. And so here, here are some other examples, NO2, nitrogen dioxide, uh, PCL5, phosphorus, pentachloride, or FCL, which is fluorine monochloride. Again, notice if you look at your periodic table that none of those are metals. They're all binary compounds of two nonmetals. Once again, here's the periodic table. Um, so let's have a look at how we would go about naming these from some examples that we already know. And I already mentioned CO2 and the name and the name for that is carbon dioxide and if you look at the formula and then you look at the name you might start to see that there is some relationship um, between the car between the name of the compound and its formula uh, again this is CO which is carbon monoxide so if we look for patterns here we can see that CO2 consists of carbon and oxygen and that CO2 has two oxygens and you might be familiar with the prefix di that means two. So carbon dioxide literally means a carbon and two oxygens. And then carbon monoxide, mono means one. So this is a compound consisting of carbon and one oxygen. Uh, so let's do the same thing with these two compounds. See if you can figure out what the names of these two compounds are. So we'll pause for just a second here and you can stop the video if you like and see if you can work out what the names of these two compounds might be using that same kind of system. Okay, so the first one of these consists of sulfur with two oxygens. And so hopefully you figured out that that is sulfur dioxide. And then the second one, sulfur with three oxygens and that one is known as sulfur trioxide. So again, this naming system is pretty uh, straightforward and tells you exactly what's going on in the compounds. Now, we're going to need to know the prefixes, and um, so here is a list of the prefixes. You'll also find that there's a list of these on the fuchsia sheet, the fuchsia that we got the other day. Um, after six, you can go up higher than six, and you're just going to use the geometry prefixes that you've learned before for 7, 8, 9, 10. Now it is possible that you're going to, going to when you have to make a word out of these, change um, the prefix slightly in order to make a word pronounceable. We'll have a couple of examples we'll look at here. So when we go about naming these binaries of two nonmetals, and remember this works only for binaries that have just two nonmetals, the naming is pretty straightforward. It's just the name of the first element, and then you name the second element, which, which you put the i ending on it. Um, 
The only difference is now you go back and put prefixes on to tell how many atoms there are of each of them, with just this one exception that you never put mono on the first element. It's always understood that if there's no prefix on the first element, that there's just one atom of it. And so if we're going to go about writing the formulas for these compounds, we can just use the name as a guide. So let's do this one, for example, dinitrogen tetroxide. So if we're going to write the formula for this, it's just a matter of dissecting the name. So we can see in this that there is nitrogen as the first element in the formula. So we're going to write the symbol for nitrogen. And then we look at the prefix on nitrogen, which is di, which indicates to us that there are two nitrogens. So we have N2. And then the second element is oxygen, represented by the word oxide. And there are four of them. The prefix tetr means Four, and this is an example of where we've had to modify a prefix in order to make it pronounceable. So dinitrogen tetroxide instead of dinitrogen tetraoxide. It's just awkward to say that. And the formula for that is N2O4. Okay, let's look at another one. Phosphorus trichloride. Phosphorus does not have a prefix on it, so it's understood that that's just P, phosphorus. And then secondly, we have chlorine, represented by the word chloride, and tri tells us that there are three chloride um, ions in this particular compound. So for these binaries of two nonmetals, we have a naming system that seems pretty straightforward, just very descriptive uh, names that have this, the names of the element and then the name of the second element with prefixes that tell us how many there are for each one. Um, and so these should be, uh, of all of, the, of them, probably some of the simplest to name because the name literally tells you exactly what's in the compound.